Okay, so I ran out of battery power on line 10, so I'm going to label that video 10A. And this one's going to be line 10B. And it's WOW 1420.4057517 megahertz. Hydro line leptin star resin identification code EM spectrum. And this one's going to be called part 59. Okay, so this is about the WOW theory. It's these digits here. 12 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2, sorry, you know what, I'm going to move this up here, right there, okay, yeah, so 12 divided by 2 right there, right, okay, so it comes to the answer of 6, so we looked over the different things that come up for 6, uh, we, we learned about the frequency and then it kind of stopped on us. So the 420 megahertz plus hydrogen uh, equals an alien radio signal. Okay, so this is showing a diagram here that shows the location of the signal in the constellation Sagittarius near the Chi Sagittarius star group. Because of the design of the experiment, the location may lie in either one of the two red bands. So it's in that area there. Okay, and there is also significant uncertainty in the declination vertical axis. For clarity, the widths of the red bands are not drawn to scale. They should actually be narrower. The original point printout of the wild signal complete with Jerry Iman's famous acclamations preserved by the Ohio Historical Society. So if you look under Wikipedia wild signal, you'll find out the information. But there's the star symbol. That's where the location of it is, and those two little lines are showing where the signal came from in that area. Okay, so just look at that star sign right there. Okay, so next is, so what have we got? As I got the wow signal is 1420.356 megahertz and 1420.4556 megahertz. Those are the two that they've decided it's come from. They are the same distance apart to the hydrogen line. Okay, so well, the bandwidth of the signal is less than 10 kilohertz. Each column on the printout corresponds to a 10 kilohertz wide channel. The signal is only present in one column. Okay, and this is more about the Chi Sagittari because I didn't know what it meant. This is the Bayer designation Chi Sagittari X SGR X Sagittari is shared by three star systems. In the constellation Sagittarius, the brightest of these is the X1 Sagittarius and X3 Sagittarius are separated by 0 0.56 degrees on the sky. The dimen the sorry, I'm trying to get this to focus. The dimmer X2 Sagittarius is located between them, 0 010 by the wow signal came from the directions of these stars. And if you look on Wikipedia, it calls it Epoch J2000.0. And it shows you the ascension, which is 19 hours, 25 minutes, and 16.5 seconds. Declination is minus 24 degrees, 30 feet, and 31 inches. Okay. And T1 is a binary star. The primary is a spectral type A5. See, so still, we still haven't gone over their spectral types, what that means, but it's a dwarf star, okay? And then X2 tells you that this spectral type is B7, and it's subgiant, which has an apparent magnitude of plus 7.26, and around 1,200 light years from Earth. And this third one has a spectral type K3 giant. So let's go over this way. So I pulled out this, the information that's important. So we'll look at the coordinates of this signal where it was found. And then I've got January 13, 2012, 9.56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my thoughts. On video number 40, I show you where I think the Maya planetary location might be. Alien Maya planet, 22 hours, 31 minutes, 57.0 seconds, in the Pegasus 
region. Um, Holman and M15 are in that area, and so is HD209458, as well as the Quasar Star, GR2148 plus 11, and the WOW SETI radio signals. 22 hours, 31 minutes, 57.0 equals the May as planetary location. Estimation by the idea of says YouTube, okay? 13 degrees, 48 feet, 13.5 inches. Images from Google Sky, DSS Consortium, SDSS, NASA, ESA. Look at how close they are. Wow, the set is in the Sagittarius region, which is the right ascension. 19 hours, 25 minutes, 16.5 seconds. The declination being minus 24 um, degrees, 30 feet, and 31 inches. Okay. The Maya planetary location, UFO Pegasus, right ascension is 22 hours, 31 minutes, 57.0 seconds. And the declination is 13 degrees, 48 feet, 13.5 inches. The wow signal is northwest of the Maya planetary location estimation. Compare it with this alien telescope radio transmission picked up by Ivan Warren, who works at the Institute of Radio Astronomy of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. More details are on video number 41 about this quasar radio space transmission. <clears throat> and then what I've put, I've grouped them together. So it's near the alien Myas Pegasus M15 home and planet uh, signal that we picked up as well. Okay, sorry, planet. That's a planet location that I estimated where they are. And this is more details about the radar quasar transmission. This is from their Warren. This is from Ivan Warren's website where he gives these readings here. Um, it's 4C12.74. I don't know what that stands for. If you know, let me know. Location RA 21 hours 48 minutes 32 seconds plus or minus 8 seconds. Declination is 11.96 degrees plus 0 0.03 degrees. Okay, the radio transmission is between WOW and the Maya planetary location <coughs> estimation. So it's in between the two. So my thoughts are a traveling UFO could go could do this signal or a planet. Cool, eh? So from this data, we can assume that all alien radio telescope transmissions from this region using 1420.4057517 megahertz hydrogen line should be compared from all peoples from around the world. So basically what I'm asking is you guys to uh, compare your signals and see what you come up with. You can all start by noting these Quasar signals on Google Sky and start a chat forum on the internet and compare your data and see what you get. I didn't know what a hydrogen line was, so I looked it up on Wikipedia. And it says the hydrogen line 21 centimeters line or HI, HL line refers, or HI, I don't know what that means, refers to the electromagnetic radiation spectral line. So it's electromagnetic radiation spectral line that is created by a change in the energy state of a neutral hydrogen atoms. This electromagnetic radiation is at the precise frequency of 1420.4057517 megahertz, which is equivalent to the vacuum wavelength of 21.10611405413 centimeters in free space. This wavelength or frequency falls within the microwave region region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it is observed frequently in radio astronomy. Since those radio waves can penetrate the large clouds of interstellar cosmic dust that are opaque to visible light. The microwaves of the hydrogen line come from the atomic transition between the two hyperfine levels of the hydrogen first ground state, the frequency of the quanta that are emitted by this transition between two different energy levels is given by Planck's equation. Planck's equation. So then I have EM spectrum. I looked that up to see what that was. And here's this graph here. You can see this will be posted up on the blog so you can actually read it. It's kind of hard to see the numbers here. But it's got 10 to the 12, 10 to the 14, 10 to the 16, 
10 to the 8, 10 to the 6. And it's got X, Y rays, X rays, UV, IR, microwave, FM, AM, radio waves, and long radio waves. And this is your visual, visible spectrum, and it goes from 400 to 700. Increasing wavelength in NMs. So electromagnetic spectrum, and then we've got class, frequency, wavelength, and energy. So for Y, it's 300 e EHZ. Wavelength is 1 p.m., and the energy is 1.24 MeV. Okay? And here's your legend. Y means gamma waves, sorry. So this symbol here means gamma waves, gamma up here. So this is cool. If you look on uh, under electromagnetic spectrum on Wikipedia, sorry, it's called electromagnetic radiation. Look that up and you'll be able to find this and I'll put the link on my blog for you. It's really interesting because if you are into looking for spectrum and stuff and looking for stars, galaxies, and planets out on Google Sky, you need to know this stuff, okay? Because this is what you're looking for. So, possible uses for study. The Pioneer plaque attached to the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 spacecraft. Remember we were talking about the Pioneer 11 spacecraft before? And it's, it's, uh, they stopped receiving signals from it. Well, it's, it's up in outer space, basically. <laughs> they know where it's going. It's up in outer space, but they haven't been getting any signals from it. So they think. Okay, so it portrays the hyperfine transition of neutral hydrogen and used the wavelength as a standard scale of measurement. For example, the height of the woman is, in the image is displayed as 8 times 21 centimeters or 168 centimeters. Similarly, the frequency of the hydrogen spin flip transition was used for a unit of time in a map to Earth included on the Pioneer plaques and also the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes. On this map, the position of the Sun is portrayed relative to 14 pulsars, whose rotation period circa 1977 is given as a multiple of the frequency of the hydrogen spin flip transition. It is theorized by the Plax creators that an advanced civilization would then be able to use the locations of these pulsars to locate the solar system at the time the spacecraft was, were launched. The 21 centimeter hydrogen line is considered a favorable frequency by the SETI program in their search for signals for potential extraterrestrial civilizations. In 1959, Italian physicist Giuseppe Conconi and American physicist Philip Morrison published Searching for Interstellar Communications, a paper proposing the 21 centimeter hydrogen line and the potential of microwaves in the search for interstellar communications. According to George Bazala, the paper by Conconi and Morrison provided a reasonable theoretical basis for them to assent. The study, the study program. Now this is a really interesting person here, Pietro Mikovsky. He proposed to use for study a frequency which is equal to pi times 1420.4 megahertz. So it's pi times 1420.4057577 megahertz equals 4.4623367 gigahertz. So since and well, you know, there's it goes to 8.9 megahertz there. Or gigahertz, and then since pi is a transcendental, transcendental number, such frequency couldn't possibly be produced in a natural way as harmonic, and would clearly signify its artificial origin, since signal would not be jammed by the H1 line itself or in any of its harmonics. So they've created a signal that looks like it can't be alien, and that's to send out to the aliens so they know that it's coming from Earth. Okay. And then we got some more graphs here. I'm running out of time again. Okay, so this is the Lyman series, Bel Belmer series, and Passion series. If you look up those three names, it tells you what it's about. What this is is electron transitions and the resulting wavelengths for hydrogen. Energy levels are not to scale. And I said find a planet Kepler. You want to look for continuous spectrum, emission lines, spectral lines, absorption. Oh, we got a lot here. Oh, okay, I'm going to be going over 15 minutes again, so I'm going to have to stop this. I'm going to continue this in number 11, okay?